Hello everyone. This is Megan Wise, the Blended Learning Coordinator for the Archdiocese of New York. I put together a short presentation today to try to encapsulate some of the wonderful conversations that I've been privileged to be a part of with fellow educators as we have grappled with the realities of our new normal during the COVID-19 pandemic. A lot of teachers have been asking about how to best be prepared for September, how to take what we've learned now and really use it to its fullest potential when we go back to school, however that might look. So without further ado, let's take a look together at a short presentation. So as I said, this is really the new normal that we are faced with. We have to be prepared for the realities of school in a COVID-19 world. And what that means is, is that all of our students all coming back to school at the same time in the same classroom and operating in a traditional way may or may not be possible. And we're not entirely sure when it might be possible again. So let's talk about the three different modes that I predict we're probably going to see all integrated into the same school year. The first mode being brick and mortar classrooms. Don't you miss that image there? Don't you wanna be back? Of course you do. Our students wanna be back, our teachers wanna be back. And brick and mortar classrooms are obviously going to have a place in the future. They might look a little differently, social distancing might make us have to reorganize a bit, but we are still going to use brick and mortar classrooms. So when we are back in the classroom, we have to really think what has to happen here? What can't happen or can't happen as well in the other sort of silos of learning that I'm gonna talk about? And what are those silos you might be wondering? Well, one of them is a synchronous remote video session. So just like I'm using Zoom right now to record this video, you can also use something like Zoom or a Google Meet as a way to do a live synchronous session where your students are on at the same time. That's not what I'm doing right now. What I'm doing right now is I am creating, creating an asynchronous video for you to watch on your own time. But when we are all together live using a video chat conference, that is a different thing than the brick and mortar classroom. It's not entirely the same. You can't just do everything you did in brick and mortar on a live Zoom session. Yes, I have a nice um, decorative background of a classroom, but I'm not really in one. And it's definitely a different silo for learning. And different things work better here than maybe they would in person, but a lot of things are not going to translate as well here as they would in person. So this is where silo number three becomes really important to keep in mind. And that is the asynchronous learning activities. So when I talk about asynchronous learning activities, you'll see I have a couple of images here. I have an image to denote using things like Seesaw or Google Classroom as learning management systems to back and forth communicate with students and parents. Talking about using things like instructional videos, like what I'm making right now, or HyperDoc activities. Asynchronous learning activities are any ways we can have students learning new material or demonstrating their learning of new material, but doing it independently on their own time and then submitting it to us on their own time. So typically that would be digitally through a learning management system. So it's not all happening in the classroom, but there are many, many learning opportunities and activities that we've done typically in a brick and mortar classroom that we can easily move into an asynchronous learning activity. I would even argue that there's quite a few things we've done in brick and mortar classrooms as a whole group activity that would best serve our students when done asynchronously instead. So step one is going to be to flip instruction whenever and wherever possible. What does that mean? Well, that means doing something exactly like what I'm doing right now which is taking a piece of content that I'd want people to learn and putting it into a video. Why put it into a video? Well, because then I can send it out and you can watch it whenever you want. You can watch it whenever you have free time. You can rewatch it. If you miss something I said, you can pause and you can go back. 
there's so much the video can do that is actually even more beneficial for students learning new content than a live session in a brick and mortar classroom would be. When a teacher is speaking to a class live whole group in a brick and mortar classroom, individual students can't pause the teacher where they need to. Individual students can't rewind and rewatch the parts they need. Furthermore, there are students who can't skip ahead over the parts they already know, or heaven forbid if they zoomed out, okay? Whereas with a video, you can make it so that they can do this on their own. And the same thing with turning your instruction into a hyperdoc, where they can explore through video, through different links, through different um, reading materials. If you give them that material to explore and engage with independently, they can do it on their own time and in their own order, and then come together with something to discuss. And this is where we come to step two. Step two is to use a synchronous video platform to check in, to say, how are you doing? If you can't be in the classroom with each other for periods of time, make sure you keep up that face-to-face -face connection, even if it's only through video. It's so important. Clarify the content. If you've sent out instructional videos for them to watch, whether it's your own pre-made instructional videos or ones that you found online, whether you've used HyperDocs or Edpuzzle or did a Zoom recording like this, clarify the content when everyone comes together onto a live Zoom session. And remember, it doesn't necessarily have to be everyone at once. You can invite small groups at once to come onto a Zoom with you. That's okay. Just as you did small groups in the classroom, you can do a small group live um, video session. It's totally fine. Use this time to answer questions. Tell students to come to the Zoom or come to the live Google Meet or however you're hosting. Tell them to come there with questions ready to ask you. And then as always, use this as a time to continue building that community and continuity. Even if it's just taking a couple of minutes at the beginning or end of each live session, to have everybody check in and say, how are you? What's going on? Don't forget that social emotional learning component to what's going on in our students' lives, especially in these stressful times. And then step three, maximize your in-person classroom time by planning for collaboration and creativity through project-based learning and other hands-on activities. Save that precious classroom time for the things that you can't do over a live Zoom chat or that you can't have the students just watch a video or read an article about it on their own. When they come together in class, that's the time when we have to be really applying our learning. That's when students need to be working together to build, to create, to really demonstrate their learning through showing you what they can do. And that's the kind of thing that has to happen when we all come together in person. And though that's the reason why we will always have to have our brick and mortar classrooms. And I hope that this has been a helpful little video for you. Um, if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, you know, my email is available uh, for all of my archdiocesan teachers. You can also check out my Google site, um, the information for that is below, uh, but please um, continue to think about what you can best spend your summer preparing for, learning how to do, practicing, so that come fall, we're ready for whatever comes with us, whatever shows up, because our students need us and we can do this. All right, I wish you all a blessed and beautiful day and stay safe, everyone.